Greetings to you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, welcome to you and uh, all our online viewers to our midweek online teaching. And I pray that you'll be encouraged and energized by the Word of God tonight. So let's go straight into the Word. My title this evening is, As We Forgive Our Debtors. The foundation text is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, and it's verse 12. And it reads like this from the King James Version. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. A scripture reading is Matthew chapter 6 and verses 14 and 15. It goes like this. And if you forgive those who have sinned against you, your heavenly father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your father will not forgive your sins. And that's also part of the New Living Translation. Now, if this was the script for a James Bond movie, the title would have been Live and Let Live. Now, repeatedly, the Lord Jesus Christ instructed his disciples to have a forgiving spirit. In that day and age, and even after that for many centuries, forgiveness was an unknown virtue. The pagan idea of that time was to do as much injury and hurt to your enemies as possible. It was literally an eye for an eye. Payback was a demand. Well, if that was the case at that time, it seems not much has changed nowadays. It's literally you tramp my toes and I'll tramp your head. And that's the attitude lots of us have. Now, I, I, I just want to impress upon you. Forgiveness is a friendly act on the part of God. It is an action or a deed where God, and I say again, God restores the offender to a state or a condition in which there shall be no obstacle to prevent the offender from enjoying communion with God. Now, very importantly, forgiveness makes peace of mind possible because of the extension of divine mercy. Forgiveness, and notice I'm stressing on the word, forgiveness removes the fear of punishment and creates love within the heart. Now, Peter considered himself to be very generous by his offer to forgive an offender as many as seven times. Because in that day and age, you were taught to only forgive someone three times. Now, Jesus shocked him and the others by encouraging an attitude. Now, remember, an attitude and not an action of unlimited forgiveness. An attitude. Matthew 18 verse 21 and 22 literally states, this means that as a believer, you have to be a forgiver. Now Jesus focused more on the harmful effects of an unforgiving spirit in the heart of the offended rather than on the tolerant attitude towards the offenders. Now you may be wondering what is going on here? Why is Jesus focusing on the person who's been offended? That's because the results or the consequences of an unforgiving spirit can cause you many problems. Namely, one, you cannot experience the joy of forgiven sins. You cannot experience the joy of answered prayers. Your unforgiving spirit drives people further away from you. And it's, it's because of your whole behavior and your, your, your persona. You become bitter. And when people see you, they actually choose to stay away from you, even those who love you and are close to you. Also, your unforgiving spirit limits your progress in your Christian journey. What kind of testimony are you going to have when you're bitter and unforgiving? And your unforgiving spirit also robs you of self-respect. You start behaving like a victim. Some of us carry so many deep but really old hurts and issues. Sometimes even the petty ones, I mean like, oh, they robbed me of my inheritance. They stole my father's house. They are so jealous of our success. They broke our home. When we needed their help, they ignored us. The pastor doesn't appreciate my contribution to the church. My brother or my sister, they hurt me. My coworker doesn't respect me anymore. My children don't appreciate me. My wife or my husband betrayed me, etc., etc., etc. You all know that story. Your unforgiving spirit makes it impossible to see your own sins and your shortcomings. Literally, a blindfold to what you're going through. Your unforgiving spirit causes you to live by the principle of hate rather than love. 
And this boils down to simply this. You're literally drinking the poison and hoping the other person will die. Consider that. Let it stew in a little bit. And if you refuse to forgive, then you're placing your present and your future under the curse of the past. I want to say that again. If you refuse to forgive, then you, that's you, you the author, you are placing your present and your future under the curse of the past. I want that to sink in. You are literally cutting your own nose to spite your face. And I want you to know that unforgiveness is a sin. And sin is a serious matter. Many times, our own forgiveness is undeserved. We like to be the recipients of forgiveness. There's a proverb that goes, to err is human, to forgive is divine. So literally, to forgive is a superhuman reaction. It's not a normal reaction. It is because it comes from God. Forgiveness is the key to unlock the door of three important things. Your restoration, your receipt of mercy, and your peaceful living. Remember that. We sing the song so casually, but consider the words. Behold how good and how pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in unity. What is unity? Unity is peaceful living. How does peaceful living come? Forgiveness, living together. Sometimes we as the offended often hurt ourselves more than the offender's original action when we do not release and forgive the perpetrator. The worst part is when your alleged offender doesn't even know that they hurt you or offended you. It's crazy sometimes how we harbor stuff and the other person doesn't even know they're guilty of it. There was a movie, God Forgives, I Don't. Be careful of the mindset of, I forgive you, but I won't forget. We are all guilty of this kind of thinking sometime or the other. Now imagine if God in heaven operated in this way. We were all definitely doomed to go to hell. Now, the flip side. The benefits of having a forgiving spirit is as follows. You clear yourself of the poison that comes from hatred and resentment. You gain a peace of mind and a good spirit not enjoyed by the unforgiving person. You experience a sense of cleanness, not cleanliness, cleanness and calm. The song goes, pastor always says, there's a little song I wrote. You might want to sing it note for note, but don't worry, be happy. Okay? Important. When you forgive, you display a beautiful spirit that others will want to imitate. You become a trendsetter. You become a role model. Your sense of forgiveness will definitely create a change of spirit in others. People will want to come to you. People will want to talk to you. People will want to be with you. And most importantly, your spirit of forgiveness is a healing and creative experience. It restores. The Bible encourages us to forgive others in the following ways. Luke chapter 17 verses 1 and 4. The command of the Savior where Jesus instructs his disciples to forgive his brother and not to cause his brother to sin. Luke chapter 23 verse 34. The example of our Savior when Jesus forgave those who crucified him and divided his clothes. Now imagine your little hurt. They crucified him. They took his belongings. They pierced his side. They embarrassed him. They beat him. They spat on him and he forgave them. Colossians 3 verse 13. Our own experience of forgiveness. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Word of caution. Your spiritual freedom and blessings are hinged on your willingness and desire to forgive others. You ask, where in the Bible does it say that? Well, in the book of Matthew chapter 18 and verses 21 and 22, reading to verse 35. We read the parable of the unmerciful servant who accepted the forgiveness and mercy extended by his master to him for his great debt, but refused to extend the same to somebody else who owed him lesser. The New International Version says it like this. In anger, the master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured. That's in verse 35. And this is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother 
from your heart. Your forgiveness cannot be mouth orientated. It has to be heart orientated. Well, it's also never easy to forgive those who have offended us and brought us pain and suffering and, and caused, you know, pain in our lives. But with the grace of God and with the help of the Holy Spirit, you can find both the wisdom and the strength needed to forgive others. First, as a matter of principle, give up or rather surrender the right to retaliate. Let God deal in vengeance if such is necessary. Second, Pray for the strength to forgive and put some effort. You can't just pray, Lord, help me to forgive. Put some effort into removing any feelings of resentment or anger towards a person who offended you. Make that move. Go and talk to the person. Extend the hand of friendship. Finally, with God's help, restore friendly relations. Now, in this current situation of COVID and uncertainty, make the effort to restore family relationships by whatever means possible. Make that phone call. Use the Zoom platform. Social media gives us so many opportunities. WhatsApp a video call. Do whatever you have to do to restore and fix so that you will never ever not be forgiven by our Father in Heaven. Be the agent for change and also a beneficiary of the change. Let the light of God's love fall on your offender through you. Be just like the Nike slogan. Do it. Just do it. Don't hold back. In closing, my wife Rita always says this to me when I'm wrestling with issues that bring me down. And it irritates me sometimes, but there's a lot of value in it. She says, hey, build a bridge, get over it. I'm going to say this to you now. Whatever's bothering you, whoever's hurt you, whoever's brought pain and suffering to you, forgive them. Build a bridge, get over it. God bless you. I hope you've been encouraged. I hope that Forgiveness becomes a, a, a mindset. Forgiveness becomes an attitude. Forgiveness becomes a lifestyle. And then you will grow in your Christian walk. I'm now going to pray and then we're going to pronounce a benediction. And then uh, you'll join us again next week. God, our Father, we come before you. We thank you, Lord, for this awesome privilege that we have to be beneficiaries of your forgiveness. Help us also to practice the same forgiveness on others my God I pray that we live lives that are full of victory lives that are full of purpose and I pray Lord that you will continue to cover us with your precious blood even as we go through this part of our lives that you'll be a constant in our lives we thank you for that now we bless you receive the benediction the Lord will bless you the Lord will keep you the Lord will make his face to shine upon you the Lord will lift up his countenance upon you and the Lord will grant you his peace the Lord will bless you coming in and you're going out from this time forth and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We'll see you on the other side.